Hello and welcome to another nail-biting, rip-roaring, unbearably exciting edition of Graphics Wizardry. With me, your Graphics Wizardry host, Phil Smith. Um, ah, oh, it feels so disingenuous when I give a sort of proper introduction to this, doesn't it? I'm just going to do some Photoshop at you, in your face. Today we're going to be looking at doing... Um, We've been doing this with um, some of the students today. When you've got a load of ideation sketches like this, I've got a little method for making them... Um, oh, you know, I overuse the word pop. But it's... It's gonna make them... It's gonna make them pop. I can't get around it. There's nothing else to say. They're gonna... I mean, they're gonna pop. I, I'm not gonna apologise for it. Remember the, I'm just going to do this, oh, it's the same thing we always do. I'm going to tidy this up. I'm going to do it just double quick. I'm not going to explain it all. You've seen me do it a million times. You've got to pop that out from the background, call it pen lines, give it a name. I'm going to crop it down so that you've actually got it cropped in a little bit. You always want a little bit of breathing space around the outside, but you certainly don't want that mess. You don't want to be looking at that, do you? Christ. Adding the levels adjustment layer in. Let's make it a little bit tidier. To make the blacks a bit blacker, the whites a bit whiter. One of the things that you guys know that I always hammer on about is this um, desaturate thing. And you actually can see when you don't do it, when you do the levels, it's far more visible, the um, colour haloing that comes as a result of the um, scan that I've done. It's a bit of a mess. So I'm going to click on this pen line layer now. You'll be able to see it actually happen this time. Click fourth up from the bottom of the adjustments on the image. Desaturate. There we go, it's lovely, isn't it? So we've still got a colour image. We can still add colour to it because it's still in RGB rather than grayscale. But there's no colour information in it. So we've got reasonably white whites. We've got sort of... No, it's not particularly black blacks. So let's just punch that a bit. Punch! And I'm going to use the dodge tool to just kill the... Um, marker underdrawings. I've actually been working on my sketching over the last year or so since we've since we've been together since we've met last. The um, probably the most useful thing that I've been using as a resource is Scott Robertson's stuff. If you guys aren't familiar with Scott Robertson's YouTube channel, I'll stick a link in the um, in the thingy down below. I'm pointing as though you can see me, but I've not got my camera turned on. So you, you'll be able to check that out. Uh, he talks a lot about line weights. He's really changed the way that I've been drawing. You can see that I've been trying to, I'm still not particularly good, but I've been trying to um, use line weight to sort of define some of the detail on this artwork. And I feel happier about how the drawings are looking now. Um, I don't know, there you go. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna flatten this down now. So that's a bit tidier. I'm a bit happier with that. So I'm going to make a new layer, stick that underneath. Remember, guys, the, the Phil Smith method. Oh, I'm, st I'm having to hammer this home with a whole new bunch of students. If you're one of my students at Cov, guys, just pretend like you always knew this. The pen line layer it always goes at the top, and it always needs to be set to multiply. And I've started doing this to try and avoid people inadvertently clicking on the pen lines and then like painting onto that layer. I'm going to lock the pen line layer. Okay, so now if I try and paint on it, nah, nah. Right, so let's rename this grey. So we've got a whole load of different um, drawings on here. And you know, if you watch the rest of the um, videos on the channel, you'll see that there's lots of methods that I've got for sort of adding depth and, and excitement, essentially, to these to make them slightly more interesting. But I quite like this one that we're going to go through now. It's really nice. It looks informal, so it's quite loose. It's quite quick which is important when you're working on whole pages full of ideation stuff like this so let's just um, no there we go so let's just uh, I'm gonna increase the brush size or uh, yeah, increase I want a, I want a, a brush with if you look we've got zero percent hardness and your opacity is at 100%. So if you guys remember, you can adjust dynamically what the brush size is. If you press on your um, keyboard, control and alt press, hold them down, 
If you're on a, a PC, it's your right mouse button. If you're on a Mac like me, it's your left mouse button. Hold that down. Left and right determines the size of the brush. You can see like this. And dragging up and down controls the hardness. All the way down drag, you get 100% hardness, which is like a hard edge brush here. All the way up to the top, 0% hardness, nice soft brush like this with a feathered edge. And of course, left to right controls the size. So I've selected grayscale slider for the colors just here. I'm going to select, say, 45%. It's not really imperative which one it is. But it's important for this bit that we're doing now that we've got the opacity set to 100. Remember, you can use the key combinations, the keys, to just select the um, opacity for brushes. If you press 2, you get 20%, 5, you get 50%, um, 78, you get 78%. If you press 0, which is one for this one, you get 100%. So what we're going to do is very simple. I'm going to use this brush on grey and I'm just going to basically use that brush to cover up the object. So obviously when I say cover up, I mean just to give it 100% coverage of the object. But you've got this nice sort of vignetted sort of softened background around the outside. So if you're just looking at the page now, obviously that's the one that's got the attention drawn towards it. If you think about the way that we were doing the drawings on some of the earlier sketch tutorials when I'm talking about making them pop, we used the um, polygonal lasso tool to select areas and then fill them with uh, a grey colour. We're going to do the exact opposite this time around. So we're going to select the areas where the light is going to be shining on the object and we're just going to click delete. So we're basically doing the opposite. So rather than painting in the areas that are in shadow, we're isolating the areas that are illuminated and using the delete key just to remove the paint from those areas. So it should be a really quick and easy way to just create that sort of color value depth information for the object. So, I mean, already that is, it's, it's a kind of done, that it's got information on it, it stands out, it has a lot more physical presence. Um, and so I could, I, I mean, I did say it was going to be quick, didn't I? We've not been here for very long, but I want you to get your money's worth. So there's um, another little adjustment that we're going to do. I clicked E so we get the Erase tool. I'm going to just reduce the size down, reduce the hardness down. And this dynamic changing of the brush size is going to be useful for what we're doing now. Rather than using the selection now to pick out stuff like return highlights across the edge, I'm literally just going to use the... Um, Erase tool, let me just make sure that it's actually set to 100% because I want this to have nice hard edges to go in and clean those up. So, again, making sure that we can like dynamically change the brush size, and I'm going to use that edge to highlight the, this sort of closed line across here. Put a little extra bit in sort of in the side of these little recessed dots here. Extra bit here for this, whatever this is. I mean, I don't know what this object is at all. I'm just It's just a thing that I drew. So we've added this in. just gives it a little bit of extra lift on the um, silhouette of the object. And if you can imagine the light is coming down from sort of, sort of behind just here, I realise that it's not 100% perfect in terms of how it's going to be illuminated. I'd be tempted to put one across the back just there. I'm going to do it. It might not. If it doesn't work, I'm going to just undo it. We'll see if we we'll see if it works. Meh. No, I don't like it. So that's gone. So that one there, done. That was it. We just you just zip through it. And for each one of these, you could go through and do the exact same thing. So let's have a look at this dubri just here. So again, we're going to have the light coming down from, it's kind of maybe the behind, sort of from the top.
So I'm pulling that one a little bit short of illuminating the whole thing because in my mind, this section just here, so we're kind of casting a little bit of a shadow across there. So again, we're sort of giving it a little bit of fake depth. And we're kind of, kind of done with that. I mean, that's... The thing that I've been talking to the students about when I've been demoing this is the sort of the mindset that you should have whilst you're working on this is to be working super quick. It's a, it's a quick way of working. It's, it's not designed to um, drag you down or to take ages to work on. So let me just show you one little thing. It's not really particularly important. You don't need to know it. So whatever. Let's say we want to do this top section here. Now, that top half is illuminated, but this bit just here, these are like little, in my mind, they were like little recesses that go into the um, into the top surface. So I kind of don't want them to be lit. I want them to still be dark. So I could paint in afterwards the grey using the brush, but then I'd have to change the brush size. I can't, I, you know, I can't be bothered. It's, I, I mean, I'm. it's supposed to be a lazy way of working. It's a quick way of working. So what I can do is, if, if I started selecting now, I could just select some more stuff. I'm going to hold down Alt as I begin to select this. If you look at the cursor, you can see the change that happens. Um, a little minus sign appears next to it. And what that means is that as I draw this shape, it removes the selection that I'm making now from the selection that already exists. So you can see now there's kind of a hole in the selection. I'm going to do the same over here. So we've got this top surface is now selected, but there's two little holes in the selection. So now when I press delete now, it doesn't apply that to the, um, to the whole thing. So it's just a quick way of making sure that the tools that you're using, you can carry on um, producing the artwork that you want without having to constantly be chopping and changing. So just make sure that that actually follows the line of the perspective. There we go. It doesn't really stand up when you zoom right in. It's not. Like I said, it's not the prettiest way of working, and I've not done an amazing job of tidying up these um, these sketches. But in terms of being able to very quickly add some sort of material depth to the objects, in my view, this is hard to beat as a a quick, very simple method. It's just occurred to me that I've not explained how, how I'm doing the, um, the dot to dot thing. Just as a little aside, if you're using, I'll use the, this to show you. When you paint with a mouse, which is what I'm doing at the moment, it can be difficult to get a nice clean line if you're trying to, ah, oh, look at that. That's the best I can do, and it is not amazing. So what I've been doing is rather than trying to draw a straight line, you just click once, hold, then hold down the shift key. I'm doing it with my little finger and then click somewhere else. Photoshop just uses whatever brush you're using at the time to draw a line between those two points. It's a really, um, it's a really quick way of working. So it, it lets you do these nice precise lines like this. So you can get a nice sort of machine perfect edge on things. So um, that's, that's kind of it. This isn't a very long tutorial because the technique's not, um, it's not a particularly difficult technique. What I think um, you might find amusing, if you actually give it a go rather than just, I mean, you're sitting at home 
watching this thinking, yeah, that looks fine. Let's just cheat a little bit and add a little, there we go. Because this is only a partial, it makes sense to do something like that. I don't know, I don't, I don't approve of having soft edges on these things, but there we go. If you guys give this a go on maybe you've got pages of your own ideation stuff, you might be able to get a nice effect or get it under your belt. It's one of those things where um, I don't really know how you use this channel, so I guess maybe you just watch it and go, oh, that was nice. Or maybe, I mean, the ideal thing would be for people to try this stuff out and integrate it into their own workflow. What do I know? As long as you enjoy it, it doesn't, I don't care. Um, yeah, there you go. So let me just, I'm gonna, I mean, I could just spend the rest of the evening doodling these little things. And do you know what? I'm, I think I might. Let's do a couple more. I guess maybe it's my dream to eventually be like the Bob Ross of uh, really bad product design drawings. It's a niche, isn't it? I guess I could occupy that. We don't need sound effects, do we? Cool, that, anyway, there we go. So there you go, have a quick go at that, maybe. Um, I'll probably, do you know what? If you don't have your own page of ideation sketches, what I'm gonna do is I'll put a link to the, um, the, the I guess the, the JPEG of this scan, you guys can give it a go yourself. I'll show you a couple more little things if you are in the mood for that. Um, when you've got a page like this, what you can do is you can either pick, you can pick a new color. Let's just have a nice light blue like this. I'm gonna just lock the transparency for this layer, for the gray layer, and then press Alt and Backspace and flood fill that layer with whatever the color is that you've got selected. But of course, um, because we've locked the transparency for that layer, you get a, a flood fill of that um, uh, that color. It shouldn't really be this hard to explain, but for some reason I'm making a ridiculous meal of it. So it can be interesting to go through. You can add a little bit of additional, um, I don't know, like a different tone, some vibe to it like this is up to you how you do this. Um, alt. Oh no, we've got the foreground selected. What's going on? There we go. Backspace, there we go. Just to, just, I, I did, because uh, I've basically been, do, been doing this today and drawing this um, to show people, and some of the students just to, just to kill some time. I've got to look busy while I'm there, that's the thing. Um, and I quite like this particular object, this bit of um, geometry here, because it has a little feature that I think I often try and I gab on about to people because I think it's interesting, which is that if you imagine that this is lit sort of from up here, coming down, it's gonna cast shadows on itself, these like stepped shadows. So for example, this top surface could be illuminated, but the back of it isn't gonna be illuminated because it's gonna have a shadow cast down from here. So you can see that actually just with that bit of grey across there, it's, it, it communicates quite a lot more about the um, about the geometry of the object. And again, if you can imagine the light coming down, it's casting a shadow across here. So I think that things like that, it's worth, you've got to constantly be on the lookout. And what I say is that you're not on the lookout because it's sort of an obligation that you have, like you have to put this in, but it's so useful to communicate the um, shape of the object that it's, you should keep an eye out for where you can use it. It's like, a, it's a really nice little feature to be able to, to drop in sometimes just to, 
add that extra depth to the, the piece that you're working on. Anyway, yeah, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do all of them, I'll let you, uh, jokes, I'm going to start on this one now. No, I'm not going to really, I've been doing that all day, I can't be bothered. So, have a go at this, have a, have a play, see whether you can get some kind of interesting results out of it. The, 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 the trick is for it to be simple, for it to be clean, and for it to be really fast. If, you, if you're working on something like this, um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't feel like it's working, the drawing, don't dig in and try and fix it. Just scrap it and start again um, when you're working on practice stuff. Because I see this all the time with people working on projects. They have an idea in their head about how they want something to look. And for, for whatever reason, they can't get it to, to that point. And then they sort of dig in and they start trying to fix it. And you end up with a document with like a million layers. <laughs> all trying to fix the problems with the layers underneath, little like like error fixes and things where they're trying to just like quickly correct this problem and that problem. When in fact, what you want to be doing is learning to do it, like learning to do it right and to, and, and to, and to work clean and to keep everything clean. And you kind of only get that sometimes from iterating your work. So like try and then don't at the end go, well, that was fine, done. It's not quite right, whatever. Try again. You know, your goal is to work fast and to work in a like a fast and professional way. So iterate your drawings and just try try a few times. Try drawing the same thing um, four or five times. Somebody uh, earlier today was commenting on how it seemed like when I'd drawn, I think it was the what the hard drive, the thing that I've got loads of views on on this um, on this channel, that it I, it I did it really quickly. But by the time I've drawn that and recorded it on YouTube. I've drawn that hard drive because I've shown it in tutorials to students probably like five or six times by that point. So, and the same with this, and this, the geometry on, on this object here, the one that we're looking at right now, this is the fourth time I've done that. Um, not, I'm not saying that because I think it looks great, but um, each time I've done it, I've understood a little bit more about how to do it. So keep using the technique. Sometimes iterate on the same thing to see, come back and look at it and see if you can make a difference to how it's worked. And that's it. That's the end of this episode of Graphics Wizardry. I feel like I've been trying to stop for like 10 minutes now, but this time it's definitely going to stop.